Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this beautiful day here in South Apopka, across from Wheatley Elementary, and uh, for our very special event today. Thank you all for coming to the ribbon cutting for Orange Technical College Apopka campus. And today we have a very special plaque unveiling in honor of Dr. Shirley Sharp Terrell. When 20 of her family members have joined us from around Central Florida today uh, and have come all the way from Tallahassee, uh, could you please give them uh, a round of applause? And if you'd stand, could you please stand? There we go. It's great. We have a wonderful turnout here today. This has been a long road to get here. About 10 years ago in 2013, I remember uh, walking the uh, Phyllis Wheatley Elementary School campus with uh, then school board member uh, Christine Moore and having a conversation with the principal, then principal, Sean Brown, about um, concerns that he had, things that, um, that they were doing at Wheatley, things uh, that were inspiring children. And one of the concerns that came up was um, actually this corner. Um, it was odd, he said to me, we have a candy store at Wheatley Elementary that we sell candy to children every day after school. And I, and I was like, why do we do that? And he said, we do that so that the children won't walk over here to the grocery store and buy candy and hang out over here because this was a significant concern for the principal, for the staff members at Wheatley. Very unusual to sell candy on a campus, especially now or even back then. But to do it in order to protect the children was their first and foremost. And at that point, we started brainstorming around what we could do and what this corner could be and mean for this community. And I know it had always been uh, a concern. There had been a lot of, um, uh, a lot of individuals who had contacted um, uh, the commissioner, the school board members around this. We had, we had employees that were concerned. And it's been a long road. So 10 years, and we're here today, um, uh, almost exactly 10 years uh, to the day. It'll be actually this fall. So um, I, I, I just wanted to share that because I know there'll be a lot of other uh, background in history, but to give you uh, a little bit of the history from, from that perspective. I'd also like to thank some of those who've joined us today, including our state representative, Doug Bankson. Thank you for being here. Uh, the team from McCree, who's responsible for this building. So the McCree team's in the back. Thank you all for being here. We have, um, and our architect, Baker Barrios, in the house, responsible for designing the building. And McCree operations director, uh, Jim McCree. Is Jim here? So first up, it is my honor to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Maria Vasquez. Good morning. It's such a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Uh, I am so excited that we are able to begin to share this facility with the community. I know you've been waiting for it for quite a long time. And we are so excited to be able to open these doors to you. You are such a vital part of our mission. Our mission is to lead our students to success with the support and involvement of the community. We cannot do it without you. Career and technical education is something that we offer that benefits all members of our community. In fact, we have five uh, technical colleges across the district and we have several smaller satellite sites similar to the one here that we are dedicating today. We are committed to APOPCA and to every neighborhood in Orange County 
this building is a physical manifestation of that, of that commitment. The offerings that will take place here will help adults and young adults better themselves and be a positive force for their community. I am so pleased that this building also provides us with an opportunity to honor a very special person who was a positive force for the Apopka community. Not only did Shirley Sharp Terrell help countless people and make Apopka a better place, she also personally opened her home to those in need. It's fitting that someone like her will be honored on the wall of our new branch. We look forward to continuing to honor change makers in this community. Thank you for coming out with us this morning. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you my deputy superintendent whose boundless energy supports career and technical education. Dr. Michael Armbruster. You know, on a windy day like this, this is the one day I like being bald. I'm going to tell you the truth. So, you know, I, I have this belief, and it's, a, it's an old story, and many of you have probably heard it, but I share it quite often because I think it's important. As we look back in our lives and we see where we are today, we go back and we find that person or that place or that thing that helped us get there. And it's a story about starfish on the beach. And, and basically speaking, there's a storm and all these starfish wash up on the beach and this young child is walking along and they're throwing a starfish back into the water. And this older cynical man walks up to the child and said, what are you doing? And the child bends down and picks up a starfish and says, I'm saving a starfish. And the old cynical man says, look up and down the beach, there are thousands of them here. What possible difference can you make? And the little girl bends down, picks it up, throws it in the water and says, I made a difference to that one. And this is what this building is about. This building isn't a huge campus that's going to serve thousands. It's not that. But what it is, is it's a starfish factory. Our goal here is that we're going to have people from this community who are going to walk through these doors and they're going to be thrown back into the ocean and live the life they were meant to live. Whether they have to get caught up on getting their high school equivalency diploma, their GED, whether they need to get marketing skills that they can use and go out into the workforce and improve their lot in life, not only will we throw those starfish back in, but that will affect the children of those starfish and the community as a whole. So I don't want you to let the size confuse you because there's going to be people who will walk through this door and they're going to walk out and it's going to make a difference to those ones. So thank you all for being here and thank you all for celebrating this opening. I was here in 2013 as the Associate Superintendent for Career and Technical Education when this crazy idea first came about. And I remember having conversations with Scott Houghton saying, I don't know, Scott, I'm not sure. I don't know, Scott, I'm not sure. He said, I'll oh, trust me. And I said, I don't know, Scott, I'm not sure. Ten years later, I'm glad I trusted you because here we are with a starfish factory. So thank you all again. I'm going to take a moment to introduce somebody who has just been nothing but wonderful for me to work with and is a true advocate of career and technical education. More than that, is a true community warrior here. Ms. Melissa Bird, our school board representative, you'll come up and say a few words. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Armbruster. I don't know if I can follow the Starfish Factory story. Come on. That's fantastic. Um, I am so excited to be here today. Uh, I'm proud to be the school board member that represents the area here. Um, and I'm so proud to be standing here, not only for the opportunities that this building is going to create, but for what this building represents. It represents the best of the power of community and collaboration. I'm going to tell you a little bit of the background and then um, those of you who don't know, you'll understand what I mean by all this. Um, we wouldn't be celebrating here today without an entire community coming together. In 2013, as Mr. Howard explained, this corner we stand on this morning had become a blight to this proud, tight-knit neighborhood. Wheatley School Administration was concerned. The faculty had some serious safety concerns for their students coming to and from school. 
While it would be impossible to name everyone who helped make this dream we're celebrating here a reality, I do want to mention a few people. In an effort to address the concerns about student safety, a team, including our Chief Communications Officer, Scott Howitt, who spoke earlier, my school board predecessor, Christine Moore, and our OCPS superintendent at the time, Dr. Barbara Jenkins, in 2013 requested an appropriation from the state budget to buy this property and turn it into an adult education center. Little did we know that this effort would take almost 10 years to become a reality. In 2014, our then Florida State Representative, Brian Nelson, who's now our mayor, assisted in getting the funding in the state budget. But because it was a capital project, it had to be reappropriated again in the 2015 state budget. And after many months, many months of drawn out negotiations with the owner of this property here, OCPS finally was able to acquire this land in 2016 and demolished the raised grocery store that stood here the next year. But higher property values at that time and the post-recession construction costs then put the price tag of building this, the full project that we wanted to do out of reach at that time. So the following year, he, then Commissioner Nelson was elected mayor and he had some community or some county commission funds left in when he left um, to put towards finishing the project with the assistance of his successors the interim county commissioner rod love and the then newly elected commissioner christine moore lots of elected officials <laughs> took part in this um, added additional funding that was secured um, from the county that's a lot of twists and turns. Let's give a hand to Mayor Nelson, our former Commissioner Rod Love, and Commissioner Christine, former Commissioner Christine Moore, uh, for a big, a big round of applause for their hard work and dedication. So, how did we get here today? Well, by 2020, OCPS had enough funds set aside to begin the planning, but then COVID hit and supply, cha supply chains were disrupted. And finally, at the end of 2021, we were able to begin design and then construction followed in 2022. But all along the way, the community expressed how important this was to them and why this project was needed and why it needed to happen for, th for the people in this community. You told us that adult education was needed in Apopka and that is and that this was the right place for it. And you held our feet to the fire to make sure it was never forgotten. It truly took a community of people working together from citizens to school um, administrators to numerous elected officials um, to make this a reality for our community. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for making that happen. Because as Dr. Armbruster said, this is not just about opening this building today. It's not just about um, the adults that are gonna walk through this door. It's about the children that those adults are gonna affect, that those lives are gonna affect. Because I always say you can't help children if you don't help the families. So um, that's what this is about. This is about helping our future and um, the community around it. And I just wanna thank this community for making sure that this stayed, this project stayed in the plans and got done and you made sure that we did it and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. Now I'd like to invite up Commissioner Moore to share just a few of her words of perspective on today's significance. Good morning. I love a, a school board member Bird's story because it really did take the village to get us across the finish line 10 years. And I think that uh, with so many elected officials, school board members, uh, principals, uh, superintendents, you have a commitment, state representatives, you have a commitment from so many of us to make sure that it's successful. I want to share just two quick stories of my time when I, when I was here trying to promote this and get it over the finish line. Uh, one was uh, the, the challenges after we received the money uh, from the, the state, 
there, there was just a, a lot of angst and trouble and turmoil with trying to negotiate with the owner. And I can remember talking, he has passed since and we loved him dearly, John Morris, uh, the, the superintendent of construction. And he would call me and say, we're, we're just not making progress today. And, and there really wasn't much I could do other than pray. And let me tell you, we probably shouldn't leave prayer to the last resort, but in this case, all I could do was pray that that owner, and I believe it was with 48 hours of the deadline, if he had not agreed, the owner had not agreed, actually it was a she, the money would have gone back to the state of Florida. So prayer works, and we're standing here today. Now, as Mrs. Bird talked about the twists and the turns that there was invest money from then Commissioner Nelson. At the time, it was Commissioner Rod Love who committed the funding, some funding from the county because there was not sufficient funding after paying that owner to build this building. And I understand today that this building cost about $1.7 million. And at one point while I was now county commissioner, I, I, I got a call from the school board Commissioner Nelson, Commissioner Love had agreed to give money. We haven't gotten our money. So guess who had to make a little phone call <laughs> about the sending the money over to Orange County Public Schools. I was so happy to do that. What a joy to be then on the other side of, of helping this project get over the finish line. So um, I have a, a check and I would love to invite uh, uh, Mrs. Bird and the two former commissioners, um, Love and Nelson to come up because we were all part of this, you know. It took that many elected officials to get this over the finish line. And finally, the community. Uh, we had a time when I announced, I put a post on Facebook about we had the money, the owner had agreed to sell the building and I had a post on Facebook, and it is today the post that has had the most interest, the most engagement. I had over 20,000, I still can't believe that, texts, replies, comments, forwards, likes about when this building was coming down. It shows you how invested this community was in this place. So thank you, everyone. Now I'd like to bring up um, uh, uh, Mayor uh, Mayor Nelson, if you would come on up. I have a few remarks from you, sir. You were you were involved in this a little bit, I think. So. <laughs> well, thank you. Wow, what a great crowd, and what an honor to to honor Dr. Shirley Sharp Terrell. So, not a more deserving person than than her. But just a couple of little couple of facts that maybe Melissa didn't even know about that in, along the journey. And one is that obviously I thought that. That technical training was very, very important. And so in my years of the legislature, one of the bills I did pass was the Gold Seal program so that scholarships for kids who don't want to go into higher education but want to come to a technical center like this that will be paid for by state dollars in the bright futures, you know, the lottery dollars that come down from the state. So a great, you know, program that now gives those kids those opportunities to go get a technical skill somewhere here or other places and, and, and get a high-paying, you know, career job. The second thing I'll bring up is that uh, it was Senate President Gardner who gave us, bumped it that, that following year on 2015, you know, it was about to expire, and I called my good friend, uh, Senator Andy Gardner, and said, hey, Andy, can you help me out here? This is about to, we're about to lose the money. Can you help me out? And, uh, yeah, go ahead, Nelson, we'll get it in there for you. So, you know, without his help and then, you know, Commissioner Love following up to make sure the money kept flowing along, it was, it was a, uh, it was a, an effort worthy of a lot of people here in this, in this, under this tent, and couldn't thank them enough, nor the community, for really putting this thing on on the map. That they knew there was a problem, and not only did we go from a problem, but now we went to one of the best solutions for a problem that you could ever ask for. So, just glad to be a part of that, and and thank you to the community for for sticking with us and sticking, making sure that this happened. Thank you. And uh, former Commissioner Rod Love, introduce Rod. Come on up. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. 
a little bit of roll on this too. Oh. <laughs> you know, I was sitting there listening to everything that was being said, and I was thinking to myself, what would be the first thing that Dr. Shirley Sharp Terrell would say? And the first thing that I know she would say is praise God. <laughs> Looks like I got a few witnesses over there. You know, I prepared a statement, but if y'all don't mind, I'm going to just come from the heart. Dr. Shirley Sharp Terrell told me this story one time about the babies going down the river. And this guy, well, he was fishing, and he saw this, this, this basket going down the river. And he heard the baby crying. So he put his fishing rod down and jumped in the water and got the baby out of the river so it didn't go over the fall. Then you look up and there were more baskets coming down the river. Then more people jumped in the water. And all of a sudden, you see a great number of people in the river trying to save these babies from going over the cliff. And all of a sudden, the guy who originally got in the water to save the first baby decided he was going to get out. And everybody was like, what are you doing? We need you here to help so these babies don't go over the cliff. And he simply resp responded to him by saying, I'm going to go upstream to see who's putting these babies in the river to begin with. And this is upstream. This is upstream. You know, I, I have to kind of go back a little bit when we talk about how we got here. I learned a lot. I learned I don't go and ask for people to sponsor bills because Shirley Sharp Terrell, she was not an ordinary person. She was an extraordinary person. So when... We went to representative then, Brian Nelson, to sponsor this. We weren't looking for a sponsor. We were looking for a champion, a champion. So when you stand here today and you see this facility, I'm hoping, I'm encouraging the people of this community use this facility because you can walk in these doors, complete the process, and change not only your life, but the trajectory of everybody in your life. I have to say this facility is not here without any scars. South of Popka Ministerial Alliance, uh, I saw Pastor Hezekiah Bradford here, I, uh, Pastor Richard King, but Dr. Shirley Shop Terrell was also an active member of the South of Popka Ministerial Alliance. And it's because she continued to grind that we're here today. So I want to say to everybody here, when you go and you are asking people to advocate, don't ask for a regular advocate. Ask for a champion because that's the reason why we're here today. We had champions. I, <laughs> I tell you what, if Dr. Shirley Sharp Terrell's sons would please stand up. Please stand up. Keith, Paul, Ryan. Let me, let me say to you all, thank you for not feeling it robbery to share your mom with us because your mom's impact is going to last for a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. So now if you would, um, if you would join me in welcoming Omar, who's going to say some words. Please, Omar, please join me. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for honoring my mother. Um, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, the NIV version, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture, this well-known phrase uh, was a permanent post-it note on the corner of my mother's monitor in that office, uh, from Commissioner Sindler to Commissioner Brummer to Commissioner Rod Love. Uh, and every time I would come up there, it's like she forgot. And my mom would pull that post-it note off and say, I pray this, I speak this over you and your brothers and y'all children and your children's children. And she said, I'll petition the Lord every morning and I, I like to think those prayer sessions she would have with Miss Maria and Roberta 
on that commissioner's floor in those mornings before everyone else arrived that she prayed for members of this community with that same scripture, giving them hopes for a future and to prosper their family. So on behalf of my family, I say thank you. I say thank you for the hard work that went into making this building um, a success and the dedication for my mother. I used to say to my mother as I got older and started learning people, uh, mama, nobody cares. Like, stop, stop, stop doing all of this. Stop, no one's paying you. Mom, stop, stop putting on these shoes and walking these streets with Miss Ella Gilmore, cooking meals with uh, Miss Gail and doing all of this work. Like, be retired, take some time. You have a pool, hang out in your pool, mom. But she was like, baby, the work has to be done. So I thank you. I, I thank you for this honor. And I pray that this building, as those that came before me says, will give folks in this community hope to do something beyond what is being done now. You know, to what was the, the great philosopher from Outcast say, to, to, to save a nation, you have to start with your corner. So we're going to start with this corner right here and branch out. So to the Orange County Public School, Orange County Government, Commissioner Rod Love, Mayor Nelson, to my fraternity brothers in Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, uh, the Winter Park Alumni Chapter, my mother's sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, uh, Bishop um, McRae, the fellow members of my mom's church experience, Christian Center, my brothers, my aunts, my uncles, my nieces, my nephews, everyone who had a hand in getting the votes to make this thing happen. Uh, on behalf of my mother, I thank you. I thank you. Like, I remember those days my mom would open her house up to people, and now I have a new cousin, and I have a new auntie. Uh, mama, it paid off. It paid off, and I thank y'all. Like, I can go on and on about my mom because I miss my old girl, but I thank y'all. My brothers and I, my sister-in-law, my wife, we're so proud of my mom. Like, we would say stuff like, stop, mom, just stop. But you guys are the reason why she kept going. So on behalf of the Sharp and Terrell family, thank y'all. Thank you very much. Omar, thank you for your words. and and. She is definitely here with us today. You feel that breeze? She is here. She is, she is with us today. So um, I'd like to invite the Dr. Sharp Terrell's family up, and we're going to unveil the plaque at this time. So if you all would come forward, watch your step, we'll go ahead and gather around the plaque so we can unveil it. Three, two, one.